Yes, sir, I'm sharing this. Like uh, I'm making the session live. Uh, it will take two, one minute. Uh, yes, the session is live now. I welcome you all to the technical session three of UAG 2021. Uh, I like to introduce the uh, chair and co-chair of the session. The session is chaired by Dr. Asif Bharadwaj. He is a scientist in IARS, Indian Institute of Remote Sensing. And the session is co-chaired by Dr. Surinder Kumar Sharma. Uh, he is also the scientist in Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, Deradun. Uh, I like to give a small guidelines brief. The total duration for each, every, uh, each participant is 10 minutes. Seven minutes for presentation, followed by three minutes for question and answer session. First, the chair and co-chair will ask their questions. And then after that, I will read, uh, dictate the participants' questions. And one more announcement regarding the publications. Uh, out of all the papers, the best quality papers will go to the PFG journal. And the remaining paper will go to the Springer. That is lecture notes on civil engineering. And also, we like to inform you that the external version uh, may be asked to some uh, it's a special issue in Journal of Unmanned Vehicle System. Uh, thank you. Sir, uh, I know I request Dr. Bar Astrup Bharatwaj and the Shurinja Kumar should to take over the session. Ashutosh, please unmute yourself. Thank you, Pratipa. Uh, I thank welcome you. all the participants of the conference, all the audiences, all the presenters, and my co-chair, Sri Surendraji. And uh, now, uh, as uh, Ms. Pratibha has told, we are going to have uh, uh, 10 minutes for each presentation, which includes three minutes of questionnaire session also. So you will have uh, seven minutes uh, for each of the presentations. And I hope uh, that the session will be very, very useful and uh, Fructifying. So uh, we will start with the first presentation uh, today. So, okay, Surinder, uh, uh, Surinder, uh, anything you would also like to convey? Uh, so just uh, welcome of, uh, all of you, and just finish, uh, it's better to finish the, on the time. So mo more you focus on the methodology and results part. Thank you. So we'll start with the first presentation. Yes, sir. Hmm. So, uh, the first presentation is the uh, title is Effects of Flight Plan Parameters to the Quality and Usability of US Photogrammetry Data Products for Tree Crown Delineation. So, you can start the presentation. Uh, so, the thank you, Dr. Is... Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Ashutas, uh, Mr. Surendra. Actually, I have requested the, the Secretariat to make use of the video that we have prepared because my internet connection is not really good and uh, to ensure that we can finish the presentation by the given time limit. So, yes, sure. I will uh, share the, your presentation video. Thank you very much. Yeah. OK. Everyone, I am Jojin Santillan from Caracas State University in Butuan City, Philippines. On behalf of our uh, co-authors, it is my pleasure to present to you our study on the effects of flight plan parameters to the quality and the usability of UAS photogrammetric data products for tree crown delineation. As a background, there have been rapid advancements in the last decades with regards to remote sensing based mapping and monitoring of forest resources. One of these is the emergence of unmanned aerial systems. Images acquired by the systems have provided users up to centimeter level of detail and accuracy. One importance of UAS is their potential in filling the data gaps and uh, supplement the capabilities of uh, manned aircraft and satellite remote sensing systems. Among the data products derived from UAS collected images and utilized for forestry applications are 3D point clouds, digital surface models, digital terrain models, and or to mosaic. Popular applications of these products include tree detection and counting, individual tree crown delineations, generation of canopy height models, estimation of tree heights, and uh, biomass predictions. These UAS products are generated through photogrammetric processing of the images, specifically through the application of various algorithms such as SIF, SFM, and MBS. Several studies have found that the success of this workflow is dependent on several factors. 
Based on our knowledge, there is no consensus on the specific flight planning characteristics, software, and uh, processing parameter settings that must be adopted. Moreover, successful modeling and generation of data products from UAS collected imagery requires diligent consideration of fundamental flight planning characteristics. Hence, we conducted this study to analyze the effects of various combinations of flight planning parameters, namely flying height above terrain and percentage image overlaps, to the quality of UAS photogrammetry data products and their degree of usability for tree crown delineation. The study area is within the Caraga State University campus in Butuan City, Agusan del Norte, Philippines with a dimension of 364 by 175 meters. To acquire the images, we used a low-cost Mavic 2 Pro unmanned aerial vehicle equipped with a 28mm focal length Hasselblad camera. Drone deploy was used to prepare a total of 16 flight plans, each plan having a specific combination of flying height and percentage overlaps. Images acquired for each flight plan were processed using Agisoft Metashape Professional version. The procedures implemented consisted of alignment of photos, building dense point cloud, building a DEM, and building an ortho mosaic. The build DEM and build ortho mosaic procedures were run twice. In the first run, interpolation and hole filling were initially disabled, respectively, to generate DSMs and ortho mosaics that will be used for quantitative analysis of data completeness. The completeness of each of the 16 sets of DSMs and orthomosics were analyzed by determining the proportion of the pixels with data and pixels with no data within the boundary of the study area. A portion of the study area containing mangium trees was chosen for tree crown delineation using multi-resolution segmentation algorithm in eCognition version 9 software. To assess the accuracy of the delineation, individual trees were manually delineated and the resulting delineated tree crowns with a total of 263 were used for comparison with the multi-resolution segmentation results. And now for the results. This bubble graph here shows the actual number of images acquired for each combination of flying height and image overlaps. The highest number of, of acquired images was at 1,836, which were acquired using a 60 meter flying height and 90% overlaps. The lowest number of images was at 45, which were acquired at 120 meter flying height and 60% overlaps. It can be noted that at any given percentage image overlaps, increasing flying heights leads to lesser number of images. In terms of pixel sizes, the smallest pixel size was obtained for images acquired at the lowest flying height and highest percentage image overlap. Shown here are example outputs of the first run of DSM and orthomosaic generation procedures. By disabling DSM interpolation and orthomosaic hole filling, the outputs clearly show uh, where and how much the information can be provided by these data products and that can be usable for tree crown delineation and other purposes. Also, the DSM and orthomosics derived using images acquired at percentage overlaps greater than or equal to 80% were found to have higher percentage of completeness. Images acquired at 60 meter flying height and 60% overlap has the least percentage of completeness at 23.76%. Now these are some of the major results of the tree crown delineations using multi-resolution segmentation. Tree crowns delineations in uh, DSMs generated using UAS images acquired at the highest flying height of 120 meters and image overlaps of 80% and 90% gained the highest overall accuracy of 43.35%. Accuracies were lowest for delineations in DSMs generated using images acquired at 60 meter flying height and irrespective of percentage image overlaps. In summary, major results showed that the percentage of completeness of the DSM and orthomosaic increases as the altitude and percentage overlaps both increases. For tree crown delineation, the highest overall accuracy of 43.35% was achieved for delineations performed in DSMs generated from images acquired at 
flying height of 120 meters and uh, 80 and 90 percent image overlaps. While obtaining a 43.35% highest overall accuracy in tree crown delineation is not impressive, the results reveal that better accuracy can be obtained from DSMs that have higher, higher percentage of completeness, specifically those that were generated using images acquired at 120 meters with minimum percentage overlaps of 80%. This ends my presentation. I would like to acknowledge the DOST, Picard, and Science for Change program for their support to this study. Thank you everyone for your attention. Thank you. Sir, now I request Chair and Coach. It's a very uh, good study and uh, very uh, crisply you have uh, given all the details of the detailed project, I will say, because you have many flight involved in this over the same area at uh, variable heights. Yes. So now the uh, uh, floor is open for questions first. So any questions are there? Uh, sir, there is no any question from participants. Okay, uh, uh, fr from the audience, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask, uh, uh, in this application, uh, you have used AGSoft uh, Metascape software for uh, developing this DSM point cloud, all these things. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, have you tried on that Pixcode also? Because Pixcode is also well known software in this field. And yeah, yeah. We somewhere... we tried. Yes, we tried uh, also using it, but uh, we are not yet done with the analysis. What are their observation on uh, means uh, using those products like uh, Pixcode products? What are your observations? Uh, actually, we have not yet uh, compared the, the two products, so yeah. Hopefully, we can we can do the uh, comparison later on when, once we are done with the uh, processing using Pix4D. Thank you. Uh, that's all from my side, sir. Uh, okay, so we can move to the next presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now I request uh, Maywe. Uh, this present uh, is paper titles on remote sensing analysis of fever detection using multispectral thermal images of autonomous disinfectant sprayer drone. Mr. Vaili. Yes, madam. Uh, can yes, I share sir. my, my slide? Yes, sir. You can start the presentation. Sir. Okay. Uh, this is Naive from uh, M. Kumar Sam Engineering College, Tamil Nadu, India. So my paper title, uh, remote sensing analysis of fever detection uh, using multispectral Thermal images of uh, autonomous disinfectant uh, sprayer drone. So uh, I focus the uh, this uh, the spray the disinfectant uh, spray drone. So uh, this is a uh, has uh, faced some problems. So uh, my proposed system is uh, this uh, cover this problem. Uh, see that uh, this is my abstract as uh, drone mapping is covered temperature value of fever uh, direction in crowd areas, and also that I have is faster RCN and algorithms, and also if you have, uh, uh, also they detected the temperature value of uh, building and road trees and any objects as possible. And also mostly videos and images covered uh, virus affected areas using uh, faster RCN and algorithms. So uh, I have uh, collected some uh, literature survey from that uh, some more reference papers. So majorly 77% uh, is result object temperature have got that uh, some more papers. I will collect it and uh, I have uh, some data sheets, sets of also that. And uh, majorly, uh, graph spraying drone uh, act as uh, uh, that uh, sand is there, spraying drone is possible. And also, artificial reasons have included. Uh, and also, that uh, updated uh, spraying places have uh, updation is there using that thermal images whenever uh, thermal mapping detection. And also, they referred uh, some more uh, papers. 73 reference papers collected and also that I have researched uh, some more result. Uh, I have collected uh, sources from FLIR.com, that website, I have collected the data sheet. Uh, that uh, data sheet covered the camera models, FLIR uh, camera, that, that is similar like a thermal IR. So uh, mostly uh, that uh, images uh, covered 8.5627 acres. And also they have uh, thermal IR have uh, 10,000 point uh, five nanometer wavelength and also uh, maximum uh, have temperatures covered in 83.51. I have uh, collected this formula is the thermal index value. 
and how we include that uh, library files uh, player in the image extractor open ghost and also open cv so this is my overall proposed system i have uh, solved that uh, simple like that image analysis only so uh, never collecting that uh, gps uh, G, uh, geo located uh, images and nir images radiation images and temperature mean that the images have analysis after analysis mean yes uh, drone uh, spray system is working so this is my uh, proposed methodology so first i collected thermal images from uh, drone option so that uh, that is due to that drone mapping after drone mapping i clouding that uh, that meshes uh, to the uh, that line and also after a ray cloud i include that processing processing have the four steps in cell processing point cloud and mesh uh, connecting and also dsm and i mean generating the dsm and orthomes images and finally we have collected the index of uh, thermal index value so after uh, color mapping uh, this uh, after color mapping have in, uh, connected to the feature extraction using that thermal ir so after uh, uh, feature extraction i will classify that value of temperature value so i have uh, i got uh, two result on 20 meters coverage from the earth and also 100 meters from the earth so that is for uh, drone uh, covered uh, that is value that fever detection uh, using that uh, faster rcn and algorithm so uh, first step i will cover the drone mapping uh, in these steps have the one uh, i think 136 images thermal images covered uh, in this location uh, as a separate own location that uh, the, the similar like hospital so uh, next one i will uh, connect it to the uh, ray cloud option ray cloud is uh, covered ground option uh, road surface and uh, so high vegetation and also building and anything is uh, any object detection is possible and this is a 3d uh, dimension wave so automatically have uh, collecting that uh, that images uh, matching that uh, this is how the some process so matching the uh, process imaging and also calibrating the images and uh, triangulating uh, images optimize imaging and also loading the ortho images is possible and a 3d covered images each point have that uh, uh, images uh, that all data stored in that uh, nodes nodes is co uh, connected to the uh, mesh so that mesh is uh, we, we can co cover that uh, uh, index value so uh, this is a area selection we have covered that first red color is shown that area selection of the fever of uh, uh, maximum temperature is possible or not uh, we have covered Uh, this is index value finding option so i have uh, collected that equal spacing and equal area and also that jenks uh, uh, jenks option is possible i will classify it uh, uh, some mapping that up to 40 degrees celsius and also that see that uh, this uh, this color cover 40 up to that uh, 7.61 to 40 other colors is uh, mentioned that uh, building option uh, building have cover that low temperature others are have maximum temperature value so i have classified the colors so this is a final set of uh, uh, final uh, that uh, mapping value this is the orthomesic uh, 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 image uh, drone mapping image and also that uh, dsm thermal match is uh, this one this red color shown that uh, building option so building have that uh, this color there's other remaining as space of uh, hospital so this is a covered uh, uh, some crowd option drone mapping have covered uh, uh, this option so we have this easily find out that uh, maximum temperature mean have shown that uh, like that here this is a uh, one person per meter square and four people per meter square is possible that so red color shown that uh, higher temperature value. so we have uh, announced that uh, and uh, so clear that grounds so it's possible and in the airport is sometime happened uh, uh, this like that uh, uh, nearest uh, no 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 say social distance option so we have we cover that uh, uh, drone have uh, collected that uh, fever direction using uh, some uh, yeah, bounding process okay uh, that is using the rcn and algorithm so uh, in test case 2 uh, we have uh, collected the simple like that uh, that flar images uh, two images have covered first have uh, uh, selected that uh, thresholding values collected then after is not the threshold is not uh, clear that so we have filling that holes and also selecting the object so finally have uh, tracking that object is possible using drone uh, this is thermal mapping you have covered uh, using the r uh, f uh, faster rcn algorithm you have covered uh, various 
applying that uh, temperature range and using the scan. So this is a convolution uh, neural network algorithm solved that whenever walking uh, and uh, uh, driving, anything is possible, easily possible. I will uh, follow these steps. Step one, I will uh, collect uh, that uh, color mapping. Step two, uh, have collecting the data set of uh, color mapping uh, final result. Step three, uh, apply our image extraction. After image extraction, I spin hacker have go to the some more uh, filing value. So next one, uh, I will collect the view thermal value of uh, each uh, uh, object. Finally, we have uh, direct that this file is uh, held for uh, detection of uh, fever. So this is uh, my classification value. So maximum, uh, this is a temperature uh, range. Uh, we have not uh, include that uh, normal temperature. So only have uh, take that fever uh, uh, 30 above greater than 38 degrees Celsius mean. We have take that uh, this only. I mean, not covers normal and uh, hypothermia, hypothermia. So that is a higher temperature is not possible, uh, not like that. So I covered uh, this uh, greater than 38 degrees or greater than 100 Fahrenheit mean have uh, covered. Yeah, please conclude now. Time is uh, okay. Sir. Uh, this is my result. Uh, so I take that persons greater than 20, 38 degrees Celsius mean we have the uh, fever uh, person two is detected. Here, uh, maximum person one is uh, detected as so greater than 38 degrees Celsius. And also greater than 38 degrees Celsius mean here, uh, fever person two uh, here is detected. So that is depends upon reflectance of uh, drone mapping. And this is uh, here uh, shown that person two is uh, higher temperature greater than 38 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is a one month report. Uh, this is, is in the Fahrenheit value. So maximum temperature A and B is there. So uh, collect, uh, that is how the maximum reaches mean how that uh, uh, collect that value of uh, that person. So conclude that I have that uh, we, uh, we collected directed the 90 percentage maximum value of temperature value and uh, drone mapping in crowd areas is possible. And also this result helped to the autonomous distribute uh, sprayer drone and also in future uh, in drone mapping supported finding fever of crowd people. Uh, anything is uh, happened at hospital, anything uh, uh, major places or uh, crowd, uh, crowding people's and um, crowding places is possible. Uh, drone video has supported the finding fever of target person and uh, tracking and also activities of, uh, is possible here. This is my reference. I've collected the, some COVID-19, uh, 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 that is a uh, fever detection is possible. I will collect so many data sheet and uh, really analysis that, uh, that one. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Give the opportunity Sunday. Thank you to all professors. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mabil. So it's a useful application. Uh, I would like to know whether you have uh, tested it, uh, like you have shown the test cases, but uh, during this uh, ongoing uh, pandemic, have you experimented it at uh, some location with the help of some agency or so? Uh, yes, sir. I have uh, I have supported, well, some of us have supported uh, the DAV in aerospace uh, uh, companies available. Uh, he is uh, one of uh, uh, that company supported me, and also uh, we have uh, we have designed that uh, so many option. I have filed that uh, somebody uh, pattern rates and also that I will cover that mapping and also that uh, is sometime uh, I collected for the MIT Chennai. So uh, that data sheet helped to uh, that one. That is FLIR camera is uh, covered that fever direction and also that uh, this is uh, uh, going only uh, research analysis only sir. Uh, it's not. Okay. Uh, uh, it's not uh, implemented. Uh, okay. Okay. So I the test case. Yes, test, test case. One image which you have used. They are the sample images, or they are collected by your drone. Uh, that is uh, collected from the drone, sir. That is a uh, have right. the so many data set is available in it. Okay. We have I collected that. Uh, it's a, a, a particularly FLA.com website is there. So they have the so many thermal images available. I will collect it and also that uh, re analysis that. One. Okay, okay. Any questions are there uh, from the audience? Sir, uh, from audience, there is no any questions, sir. Uh, one question. Yeah, sorry, sorry. From the part, yes. Yeah. Uh, one question uh, I want to ask you then, in, uh, initially you shown some hospital location, there you collected some data and generated 3D point cloud. So that, that thing is done for what purpose? Like. Uh, because in that thing, the, I think uh, people were not... Sir, excuse me, sorry for interrupting. Your voice is not uh, not clear. Much. So, yeah. 
so okay. please do keep yeah. my question is initially you have shown uh, some hospital location from there uh, some thermal images were collected so my question is ki for what purpose those those images are collected because uh, in on, in those images in people were not there so for what purpose the images were collected uh, sir i will uh, make this idea uh, that is uh, sand is a uh, uh, spraying drone is available uh, so many hospital uh, sometime uh, that is implemented that uh, drone is implemented that drone have some problems so i mean uh, that fever where is the fever person is available where is it's not available so it's not detected so i have uh, just to uh, surrounding that the drone mapping i got the drone mapping and also that and uh, collected that where is the patient is uh, available more and where is no or no more so no more is they be not uh, uh, take that uh, that points that uh, uh, that uh, mean uh, that places we only focused uh, uh, where is the fever uh, uh, people is available so that places only have that covered uh, sanitizing option okay okay thank Let's you thank you mr uh, mevel uh, we wish yes. you all the best uh, so that yes. this uh, drone application can uh, really help people in the coming time thank yes. you thank you thank you thank you sir, thank you, sir. so uh, we will move to the third presentation uh, by shri uh, venka ravi babu mandla Uh, it is on the role of uh, drone technology in sustainable rural development opportunity and uh, challenges yeah, over to you yeah so good afternoon uh, i hope you are all able to see my screen yes yes yeah good afternoon uh, chair and co chair uh, uh, ashutosh and uh, surender uh, so uh, actually this is a review paper actually uh, we have gone through the uh, the technology how it is happening into the rural development point of view and where people can concentrate to implement it so that's what we have reviewed almost 100 and plus papers and uh, we are compressed this paper uh, paper so myself uh, uh, from national institute of rural development at panchayat jiraj and uh, another uh, author is ch uh, 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 nagavan is from freelancer geo special consultant and uh, one more student is a phd scholar from nig warangal so everybody knows that in fact uh, the drone technology we are using when i talking about rural development of course it's a very important in the crux in the agriculture point of view and uh, where especially on the food and water the resources how it is going to be many technologies are giving you lot of solutions and now the latest technology uh, uae uh, like uh, uav is giving wonderful solutions but and it is going to be lead for the monitoring and decision so how it is going to be and what are the challenges here it is taking places and what is the employability opportunity in this concerns i would like to emphasize in the couple of uh, i mean uh, in another 7 minutes so these are the different technologies and applications people are used and i don't no need to explain them in uh, uh, audience because last two days we yes, today and yesterday people have given enough knowledge and enough uh, application in this concerns and the well proved but only thing is it's not well utilizing on the grassroots level and because there are various reasons i am going to emphasize that and the main thing is in the rural development point of view uh, the uh, the forest application i want to touch with a few application point of view the forest application again and this is a one livelihood opportunity for the rural people where they need to go for the more commercialized crops and a biomass content and this is a where 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 like you can also keep the extended like emerging species also and drones people are using in the developed countries very uh, nicely and identify them into the uh, properly and wildlife monitoring concerns also people are utilizing and agriculture point of view yes it is a well uh, advanced stages also is coming up and if i if you do remember our iit chairman uh, board of uh, bos chairman uh, uh, the red reddy also emphasize on the inauguration sections they used to help the uh, different governments and agriculture uh, the developed sensors they are assessing immediately when they scanning into the agriculture areas based on the greenness they are trying to identify the the stress and what how much it is going to be the health condition then and there it is getting of course it is having a lot of uh new uh, like a uh, uh, tools it is involved but however it should be uh, having a more real time in the nature and of course in, uh, after the doing all these things of uh, it is a well 
people are used into the pesticide sprays and the plant uh, sensors also is developed. And if you take into the even PVR Mohan Reddy also has explained, they helped in the Rajasthan uh, locust, uh, uh, the spreading, they are trying to kill them into the people, but they are unable to give the training to the local people because they need to go for the, the expertised people. So that is the way the lacking also is taking places. And the pesticide sprays, it is happening into the developed countries, in fact, and we are also trying to use it. The problem is in the plantic size, so that will also be keeping into that mind. And the plants stresses are like a stresses and also is having a lot of sensors is developed and multispectral and hyperspectral sensors also is well used and people are using in the the species level identification what stress what kind of minerals is stressing into the uh, soils and at the same at the same time the quality of plugging also people are using while taking into the the yield and uh, to getting into the marketing stages of course it is uh, trying to make into the environmental monitoring and agriculture point of view also and the fisheries again is one of the uh, the major field, uh, one of the good field into the rural development point of view. People are using multispectral and hyperspectral data sets, also using for the oceanography point of view. But and drone is taking the game changer where the rural uh, fish ponds also it is uh, trying to see the someone who want to like getting into the ministry or uh, um, the budget for allocation kind of thing. This is also is going to be used the fish habitats and how the inlet topography is changing. And there is a lot of, uh, if you take into the developed countries, they used to have uh, uh, the fish sizes and all, but it, we don't have that kind of ab habitats. They're simply, we are taking the, all the fishes and getting into the market, but not like that. It's all well matured fishes also taking places. And for that, we need to have uh, so many tools to be identify the novel classification approach then and there when the fly is taking places, they need to identify and identify, they need to give the indication, this is the mature fit, this, this can be uh, like a trace and getting into the uh, concerns. At the same time, river and monitoring management also people are using and rural, uh, the lake, like uh, especially the tank, the cascading modes, how it is taking places also one can monitor these kind of things people are using, but in Indian countries is very much essential. And livestock monitoring is this also, again, one of the important aspects in the rural development point of view, the health and general being of their cattle and at the same time, abnormal animal behaviors also can be monitored and significant diseases because many government, especially if you take into the Telangana government, so much money is pumping to the uh, sheep uh, and the people are one kind of community they are giving the money to the, their livelihoods. So how to grab them, how to trap them. So all those things also can be drone can be it, it effectively utilized. So it can be trespassed and the scare for the predatory when they're going for the grazing. So this can be also is uh, very important. And very important thing is the land conservation and development. And it is a it is a very important that drones are giving the very good role for the comprehensive report. And it is a giving the complete the, the solution for the barriers, I mean, especially for the boundaries, the de demarcations and encroachment aspects. At the same time, uh, the how the rural people are taking the different activities for the industry and as well, especially mining activities also can be uh, monitored. And that is the reason government of India, especially for the Panchayatiras department, where the Swamitri Yojana also introduced in the last year uh, during the uh, Panchayatiras Divas. The Prime Minister Modi ji also is in inaugurated this activity. And this is a, one of the uh, very important aspects for the Abadi areas. Yeah. They started into the, uh, the Swamitri Yojana scheme to give this kind of solution, the issues of property, like a property cards, they want to use the then and there, like just like other card, they want to use the in the villages their property cards, and based on the all the information, the detailed information, one can the panchayati panchayat itself, the gram panchayati itself, they can generate the automatic property tax because they have all the accountability, the collections, so that they can plan for the revenue sources. So the own source revenue also can be rethinked. And minimizing the property disputes also is just happening in the uh, protecting the civil uh, like uh, rights uh, in the villages and the encroachment ideas also is taking a lot of disputes also is going to be uh, like a, a skew the solutions and the one more very important thing is the gram panchayat development plan which is a ministry of rural development as well as panchayat is taking a very initiative and previously the gram sabha where the people are taking the decision uh, the what to do for the financial next financial year what kind of asset they need to make it 
so previously they are taking only four five people uh, uh, like agenda and they are preparing but now the gram panchayat development is planning is happening very drastically and all 29 departments are sitting together they are planning with the uh, gas based uh, solutions not for the tech like uh, simply they want to go for the here is a check dams and all but technically geospatial technology properly they are using and they are making up plans and they are uploading to the website and they taking up concern uh, con like a concerns and converging the many schemes in these concerns so drone drone technology is taking a plane but taking uh, like it, it is changing the game plane in fact uh, in these concerns and one can see the what is the other states, the implemented state, what is the status of drone technology that making the maps, of course, it will take a lot of time to get into that, but how to get the, those, those solutions are we getting to that. So as of January 1st, I mean, February 1st, uh, sorry, April 1st, this is the statistics, one can go and see the, what is the status of in these concerns. So what is the major issues? Major issues is, of course, when the, the inaugural section, the Joint Secretary of Ministry of Aviation says, uh, spoke about the uh, altitude and permissions. Uh, now permissions are getting a little bit easy and regulations getting into the very comfortable. But things th still uh, we need as a rural point of view, it should be a more visibility, the, the app based, I suppose in my Gram Panchayat, I want to slow the drone and somebody is going to get into that. I want to update my complete Gram Panchayat rural development point of view. I need to change thing, uh, planning the uh, for the next five years. So where should I get into that? What should I get into that? Is there any easy way to get to crack those things? So these things do, should be enabled. And at the same time, the boundary issue disputes are very, very uh, critical now. The, all the village boundaries and the, all the data should be disseminated. That is the reason many government even is are taking places under the Bhuvan Panchayat and Gram Manchitra and by NIC and all that, giving the lot of dis data dissemination. However, the boundaries are very important uh, because we don't have a proper uh, boundaries because there is a two issues. One is the Survey of India boundary and the cadastral maps boundary, the village revenue boundaries. So people want to have a plan, not only these two boundaries, because when they are going for the natural resources planning, it should be a watershed based. So uh so uh, agriculture sizing and this is one more important agriculture land sizing and the local governments are the pattern also is very important because we don't have a homogeneity of the crop sizing so we have a very uh, small area so much crops also is taking places that is one of the reason and uh, especially for the mgnrg schemes government is looking for the how to grab the uh, avenue tree plantation so where the government is spending a lot of money on the uh, greenhouse gases radio reduction and uh, uh, SDG goals point of view on tree plantation for the farmer level and roadside tree plantation also. And the watershed boundaries and the watershed implementation point of view, of course, we have asset mappings concerns and we have asset uh, monitoring geotagged by the uh, many people from the ground and the NRSA is also kept it. But some objectives we need to go for the uh, detailed monitoring. So where it is a drone is going to be can be uh, do all these things and road monitoring and where the road is a very essential point of view in the road like the northeast places how it is going to take in places what kind of qualities can get, get into that with the low cost and pma was say how was yosna scheme also is a well geotagged is giving more transparency but the road technology also is giving more accountability and more clarity in these concerns and the the empowering of the local people are very very important for the in this technology and for the NRM works and the capacity building, especially for that, that is the reason, whatever the training programs we have, we used to give the this kind of drone technology for the introduction point of view, but it is not enough, it is just started. So we need to give a more youth and a local, not only for the local people and the farmers also, we need to give a much understanding and localized language the drone technology should be disseminated. Not only for that, the effective cost effective should be come down and local like Atmanirbhaya Atman scheme, it should come to the local manufacturing and all the tools should be of open access so that they can easily convert one clip one, one language to another language. And of course, it is required to the, for the e, uh, technology for the e-governance also. So employment opportunity concern, yes, there is a lot of employment opportunity in this concern when you want to, suppose uh, the government want to uh, improve the complete- Ravi, uh, please yeah. conclude. That's yes. a, what two more minutes I will finish it and the migration of the people how it is going to because people are migrating so this is a big issue for the job point of view also training youth people and is very essential and the precision farming practices and manufacturing concerns also we need to check 
and the operational strategies we need to take in places because this is one example I gave here. Anyway, the presentation is throwing to that, kindly go through it. And rural technology parks where we used to establish. So drone technology also should be taking place, this kind of rural technology park, the, uh, the starting from the manufacturing to the implementation and uh, deliverable concerns. So the training and all, we can take care, take care of all these things. And the flagship programs of the PMGSY, PMGSY, and all monitoring evaluation schemes should be very easy. And the impact assessment can be also studied for the ones that youth and the farmers, if it is going to be uh, adapt this technology with the low cost and all, it will be easy. And I'll, at the same time, the innovator and researchers, the stabilize, the standardization, making into the standardization very easy, simple. I mean, it should be uh, simplified. And uh, the skilling and the production also should think as per the even. I have taken this quotes from the Mohan Reddy sir. And uh, concluding, if I want to conclude in the, uh, these things, are uh, increasing the cultivable and food requirement, the long term ecological things you need to get into that drone, the productivity and conservation into the real time is very much important. And this will change into the policy and programs. And uh, uh, we need to get into the, this training and capacity building into the, these kind of technologies into the so that the policy programs can be changed. And it should be focused on the local and the real time and the social benefit cause. So integrating the artificial, all the technology, data mining, all whatever it is, it should be a very easy way. And the livelihood for the agriculture point of view, knowledge gap monitoring in the rural community also should be uh, adapted. So that's what uh, this is what I just want to give you to the uh, uh, presentation. So thank you so much for giving the opportunity for the organizing committee, especially my boss, uh, Dr. Kamal Jain. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Babu. Uh, it is a good, uh, literature survey wherein uh, the government schemes has been related to the technology and how it can be utilized uh, up to the village level. So that way it is a good one. Uh, so now any uh, floor is open to question. Any questions are there? Um, sir, no questions from participants. Um, Surendra, okay. sir, we have. Yes, Surendra. No questions from us. Okay, fine. So we'll move to next uh, presentation. Uh, uh, by Mr. Valken Yilmaz on uh, an automated process uh, to filter US-based uh, point clouds. So kindly, uh, we'll stick to our timeline of 10 minutes, including the query session. So if cautions are not there, then we will take advantage of uh, that time also. Yeah, Mr. Valken, yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. I'm Volkan Yilmaz from Martin Church. Turkey. Uh, today, I will present you my study, uh, which is on the automated filtering of UAS-based point clouds. In fact, you can go to uh, full screen mode. You can go to full screen mode. Okay. Here we go. So, uh, point cloud filtering uh, refers to the removal of the points of the above ground objects, uh, such as trees, buildings, etc., from the point cloud uh, to obtain the only the elevation information of the bare earth surface. So, point cloud filtering is the first and most important step of EPM generation. As you may know, uh, the literature reports a large number of point cloud filtering approaches. And each of these approaches use a number of parameter values due to the uh, irregularities in the topography of the Earth's surface. And these parameter values, of course, make filtering process dependent on the user-defined parameters. In many cases, the users um, have to try different parameter values to get the optimum filtering performance, which is neither practical nor time efficient. So, and an automated process is needed to minimize the filtering errors uh, caused as a result of inc incorrect parameter definition. Considering this, this study aimed to automate a morphological based filtering algorithm, SMRF. I will call this algorithm as SMRF from now on, by estimating its parameters, parameters using the metaheuristic whale optimization algorithm. The proposed uh, point cloud filtering strategy was applied in a test site located in the Fatih and faculty campus of Trabzon University, Trabzon, Turkey. 
And the point cloud of the study area was produced from 261 aerial photos taken by Air Rikov GR Digital for unmanned aerial system. And you can see it in the slide. The SMRF algorithm applies a number of morphological opening operations against a DSM. And then a minimum elevation surface uh, is produced using the points with minimum elevation. Non-ground points are iteratively removed considering the distance to the minimum surface. The used SMRF algorithm uses five parameters. And these are the parameters. We have a parameter C, which is the cell size of the created surface. S is the maximum slope, T is the height threshold, E is the elevation scaling factor, and W is the size of the window uh, that applies the opening operation. So the uh, whale optimization algorithm is a population-based algorithm and based on the hunting behavior of humpback whales. The whale optimization algorithm starts with a random population that consists of possible solutions. And the solutions are improved until a stopping criterion is achieved. The whale optimization algorithm improves the solutions with respect to three mechanisms. And the first one models the behavior of and circle grave. It improves the solutions as seen in the slide. The second and third mechanisms model the behaviors of spiral updating position and is searching for prey, respectively. And these mechanisms improve the solution, as in the slide. The whale optimization algorithm continues its uh, iterations until a stopping criterion is achieved. The, in this study, used the total error metric to minimize the filtering errors in each iteration. In this slide, you can see the total error metric formula. We calculated the total error values using 10,000 reference points, 5,000 for ground and 5,000 for non-ground features. In the slide, you can see the lower bounds and the upper, upper bounds of the parameters. You can also see the uh, optimum parameter values achieved by the whale optimization algorithm. The performance of the proposed filtering methodology was compared not only against that of the standard SMRF algorithm, but also against those of popular filtering algorithms, uh, closed simulation filtering, and progressive thin densification. In this slide, you can see the digital terrain models uh, produced by the proposed method and the other methods used. Uh, as, as seen in this slide, the proposed method and the closed simulation filtering algorithm presented a very similar performance as it is very hard to notice the difference between these between the digital terrain models uh, produced from these methods the proposed algorithm and uh, closed simulation filtering algorithm show the best performance among all on the other hand uh, the original smrf and progressive thin densification algorithms kept a considerable amount of the non-ground points which we don't want and these are the metric values computed from the filtered point clouds. Uh, as, you can, as you can see, the filtered point cloud obtained from the proposed method resulted in the best total error value. The standard SMRF algorithm showed the worst performance of all. The variations in the topography of the surface of the Earth actually makes point cloud filtering a challenging process. Uh, in many cases, the analysts had to try different parameter values to get the best filtering performance from the point cloud filtering algorithms, which is another factor uh, that makes point cloud filtering process a challenging and time-consuming task. On the other hand, unsuitable parameter values uh, lead to greater filtering errors. Hence, parameter values lead to greater, uh, as I mentioned before, parameter values, unsuitable parameter values result in greater filtering errors. So this study aimed to automate a morphology-based filtering algorithm, SMRF, through the use of a meteoristic algorithm, whale optimization algorithm, to avoid any uh, errors caused by 
uh, the user intervention. It can also be concluded that the proposed method can be effectively used for uh, UAS-based point clouds. Thank you very much. I try to be as quick as possible. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Walken. So it's a very oh. important uh, application uh, to produce uh, the filtered, uh, normalized uh, DSM surface you may have to generate. So DTM, DSM, and DM generation uh, processes require this. Uh, so now the floor is open uh, for the audience to ask any queries. Uh, sir, right now we don't have any questions from our participants. So maybe I also like to inform you this. Uh, the participants may see the video which will be uploaded in the below platform. They may ask the questions there. So authors can, uh, presenters can discuss with them. They're also sir. So my co-chair, uh, Mr. Surin. No, sir, no question. Okay, fine. So, have you compared this uh, your results with the, the standard uh, operations uh, which are available in the uh, photogrammetric softwares? No, actually, we didn't compare. Uh, all I wanted to do is to automate the filtering process of the SMRF algorithm. I uh, compared my results, I mean, the results of the proposed algorithm against the results from the uh, popular filtering algorithms, closed simulation filtering and progressive intensification algorithms. And our method uh, outperformed the, the other methods I used in the study. It's giving good results. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Hello. Uh, sir, yeah. sorry, one, one question from participant for the presenter. Okay. Uh, from NDSM. Can we generate the DSM again? The question is for, for Ms. Dr. Walken. So, sorry, I didn't get you. Uh, from NDSM, can we generate DSM again? From NDSM? Yes. Yeah, it's possible you can do that. Okay. The aim was not that in the study, but you can do that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Can, can I ask some can I ask some question? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, as you know, uh, the skip is very very far is yeah? We cannot uh, running in one parameter. How how can you accommodate uh, the vary of the terrain? I mean the landscape. Sometimes building, sometimes vegetation, something something like that. Can you can you hear my question? I think the voice was not clear. Can you repeat it once again? Okay. How, how you how, how you accommodate the ferry of the landscape? I mean, you uh -oh. cannot running in one in one parameter. Maybe uh, you can try uh, uh, something like iteration process or, or something like another else maybe. What check, I understood, uh, Mr. Walken, uh, what is the question is that uh, how you are handling the different features. So sometimes yes. you are having the vegetation uh, features on the ground, like trees are there or buildings are there. So how feature-wise uh, you are operating the algorithm? Uh, I think that is uh, what you want to know. Yeah. Hello. Uh, sorry for interrupting, uh, Mr. I think he is also asking questions. Yeah, he, he is can, not like, able to he, hear. Yeah, he can post the uh, question in the chat box. So later at the time, if we have a time, uh, we can discuss either uh, else he can reply in the chat box only. Right. Yes. Sorry, Sorry, I just no, no problem, no problem, Mr. Walker. So thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, now we thank will move you. to the uh, next presentation uh, by Mr. Rishikesh Mulay. It is an application of UAV in heritage conservation, a case study of Malargad in uh, Pune district, Maharashtra. Thank you, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, voice, but you can switch on your video also uh, and share the uh, screen. Uh, sir, there, there is, yeah, there is a uh, 
range problem i will share my screen but not able okay. to sh share my camera no problem no problem you can you, uh, you can go ahead yeah okay uh, mr vulcan please uh, uh please stop your sharing okay thank you this this is uh, okay uh, my screen is visible yes it is visible you can start okay yes. uh, okay uh, good afternoon all i am uh, Pro uh, professor rishikesh moye from mit school of engineering mit edit university pune my paper is on uh, this application of uav in heritage conservation a case study of mallargarh pune district maharashtra uh, this is my outline of this uh, presentation uh, as we know that uh, the you uh, uh, know the first in first uh, as a disaster damage assessment done by this uh, uav in 1906 that kite based camera was having a weight of 15 to 20 kg and dimension 5 meter by 5 meter and flying height is up near about 800 feet so this is the first uh, uh, case study uh, first study done by this uh, uav or known as a, okay and uh, we know that then from the 1995 to the uh, 2020 21 that uh, uav evolution so uh, this case study area is uh, near about 5 um, acre uh, having an area of about 5 acre uh, which is situated in pune district uh, in maharashtra india the high, height of uh, from the msl is 3100 feet and uh, which is constructed in a uh, 1775 in maratha empire and the name of malla uh, mallargarh is given from the god malla you uh, observe this um, photograph the front view of the um, fort it's uh, which is uh, captured in 2012 and uh, this is the top view of a fort but in a 2018 and the area fort is collapsed due to some uh, uh, environmental uh, effect and the uh, earthquake and uh, this, this is the current view of this fort and that's why uh, this is a, so i gain an interest in this uh, um area uh, to conserve our own culture and value for our and tradition beyond uh, our uh, aspects so this is a, some photographs of this um, study area collapse photographs if you observe many of the part it's collapse due to the uh, environmental effect and uh, uh, there are earthquakes okay. so this is a outline uh, this is a method of uh, this uh, um, uh, building of this our survey engineering survey and uh, uh, then we are going to go to to the data processing and the main major part which is the repairing a method for the structure which is uh, still under in process so for this uh, survey we compare the both different two types of drones and uh, uh, we prepare a data set Uh, as we know that the DJI Phantom 4, which is used for this uh, uh, survey, uh, with an uh, side and front overlap, 80%. Both drones with uh, I use both the drones, DJI and uh, Idea Four Ninja drone, uh, which uh, uh, having a height of uh, 50 minimum uh, 39 meter, and uh, Idea Four drone having uh, flying height is 50 meter and overlap is 80 meter, 80 meter. So. Uh, this is flight planning and uh, flight data we use uh, different two combinations of for this uh, this is our first case study for this uh, mallargarh and uh, as uh, government uh, is increases uh, interest uh, to conserve our fort so uh, we prepare a one case study on this on this so these are the some photographs at the time of survey uh, after this uh, data processing which uh, uh, which is done in ajs soft uh, and the generic uh, this is a generic pre selection method is a medium uh, pre reference pre selection is a source key point limit is a 40000 and uh, type point limit is a uh, 4000 and stationary type point is excluded we uh, get the cam cam camera calibration uh, for camera calibration as uh, in the ajs soft after this uh, why we select uh, the flying combination uh, as this diagram shows the flying combination height with one is a 30 meter and another one is a 50 meter that gives a 553 photographs out of this 
three photographs um, five photos are uh, five photos are uh, selected and uh, the combination of this gives a flying height of 39.1 meter okay and the ground resolution ground sampling distance uh, uh, is uh, near about 1.03 cm per pixel Okay, an average uh, which is a cover I mean near about 1.11 square kilometer uh, area. Out of that, we are only selecting for our case studies of five acres. So this is a dense point cloud for the Mulladka 3D modeling and a KML model of this one. This is our, our major output. Now this major part is started. Uh, by using digital elevation model, digital surface model, and digital terrain model, we get the damage area observations through a uh, prepare a quantitative data set for the calculation. Here, we develop our uh, quantitative data, data set by using this digital terrain model and digital surface model. So, uh, by observing of this each point, we uh, calculate a mathematical, we uh, get the mathematical calculation and uh, the total quantity for the repair. This is a total quantity which uh, gives uh, the total volume of a uh, collapse area. So for uh, these are the some, some sample case studies uh, for this Maldargar. Still, uh, we are uh, yeah, we are in process to generate or remaining all the quantities, and uh, uh, we are uh, in process to validate this quantity to with the uh, ground quantities also. So uh, for this area, the first is a 24.2 cubic meter. Uh, second is a 91.25 cubic meter. This is for the, this is a cross section, which is collapse part. And this is a uh, top view of this collapse, collapse part. And uh, um, uh, this is a one, uh, another one partial collapse part, which uh, having a length of 25.5 meter and uh, uh, we take total thickness, average total thickness is 0.2 meter and average height is 2.66 meter. That gives a 13.56 cubic meter, uh, meter, uh, meter uh, volume of a collapse part. So, depend on this, we are now go going to prepare our uh, repairing method, repairing material. So, uh, at the end, uh, we can uh, conclude that uh, this um, rapid development uh, in UAV, you technology is allowing to calculate highly accurate data with the sensors. UAV provide advantage of the users in a documentation having a work with high accuracy and a speed with a less cost. After analyzing all the data which is captured from the UAV such as images, uh, ortho images, uh, DSM, digital elevation model, uh, which, which can be effective uh, for the heritage uh, and historic structure, uh, for the preservation. The output in the form of 3D model and the auto mosaic provide an high accurate details in quantitatively, uh, in quantitatively with damage calculations for it. In aid uh, for the reconstruction of a geometric information for a original structure, we can say that the UAV based mapping with a PPK, RTK stations found to be very effective. UAV equipped with a mecha, uh, mechatronic facility can carry an additional sensor for a safety and a data capturing can improve the result in various applications. So these are the references which is uh, refer uh, for this uh, damage calculations and the preparation of the data set. So thank you. Uh, I'm uh, thank you for the my organization even and i'm thank you for the indian institute of remote sensing for for giving this uh give me the, this opportunity for this presentation thank you thank you mr uh, mule uh, it was a good practical application based study uh, similar to the first study which was presented by mr georgine from uh, philippines uh, so uh, now we will go for the question session any questions are there? Uh, yes, sir. There is a question. Uh, our length, breadth, and height are sufficient for knowing the volume of area which has been destructed. Hello? Ha, am I audible? Yes, yes. You are audible. Can you repeat yes. it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Our length, breadth, and height are sufficient hmm. for knowing the volume of area which has been destructed. Uh, Hello, hello. Ah. Your, your voice is breaking. We can. The question is, Mr. Mule, 
Yeah. Uh, that basically the disrupted area is a irregular figure. Yeah. So can you explain that uh, because in the formulation you have that, shown the land breadth and height yeah, only. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, there is uh, some mathematical for uh, rules. Uh, we can uh, calculate an average uh, uh, area uh, or, or average volume. Now we are in preparation. Or we are we are calculating by the software method, and we are uh, even AGI soft giving uh, that uh, uh, advantage uh, that. Uh, that uh, that we can calculate direct volume for, of that disrupted area and uh, and we are validating from the actual ground study also this is a, that is that part is in process still process okay because you will need some mathematical interpolation methods yeah yeah yeah, yeah. for that okay any other queries uh, are there uh, no sir that's it from audience yeah, mr sarind my co chair he has a question yeah oh. Sir, uh, you are saying that uh, that uh, that monument, that heritage is destroyed. After that, you are reconstructing using the UV data. Huh. So, you have collected the data after the, the destruction. So, how you will reconstruct the same shape? Like uh, you are using the data set? Uh, for the same. There are many methods. In civil engineering, there are many methods uh, for the re reconstructions. So repair, repair and rehabilitation is one of the uh, method which is used by Archaeological Department of India, uh, archaeological uh, uh, agencies, uh, even architecture and uh, department, and even civil engineering department. So we are uh, right, right now we are in process that uh, the, we are we are going to develop one method for the reconstruction. So there are so many methods for rebarring, reconstruction, uh, reconstruction of this heritage structure. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you, Mr. Mulle. Thank you, uh, sir. So we'll move to we'll move to the next presentation uh, by Ms. Irma. Uh, it is on the automatic pot hole detection by different multispectral band combinations. Uh, sir, actually, Mr. Uh, Mulle. Yes, sir. Uh, due to some network issue, they are unable to join with us. So I have the video, so I can share okay. the video first. Okay, we can play that. Yes, yes, please play. Yes, sir. Welcome and good day, everyone. Okay, today I would like to share my one of my findings in the pothole detection. Yeah. Eh? So automatic automatic pothole detection by different multispectral band combinations. So I am Harold Tahar. Okay, this is my first author, eh? and manager. So as we know, eh, the road is main. Uh, the road is one of the main infrastructure eh, in the, any country. So it will, uh, uh, it will connect eh, from uh, the other state to other state. So the worsening and aging of the road surface affect the few, few, few types of the problems. So it will appear on the pavement during use. Eh, when we use, when using the road eh, uh, more fr uh, frequently. So uh, and then with the load eh, from the uh, vehicle so it will affect the uh, road so the conventional methods eh, uh, were used eh, to distinguish and assess the pavement distress however it's uh, it, it's take a lot a lot of time and then uh, the lot of costs uh, in order to uh, to identify the potholes so uh, the autom automation of road surface investigation may result in great financial survey so in order to monitor the road pothole uh, Okay, so the performance of uh, UAV system together with the multi spectral sensor okay can eh, improve eh, the um, monitoring methods okay so it can become the faster and safe cost eh, in order to obtain the 2d model so they, therefore the study aim the aim was to automate the portfolio sections by using uav multispectral images so the objective of the study was to identify eh, the band combination of the two the portfolio sections using multispectral sensors and analyze the 2d portfolio eh, with the actual measurements Okay, so this is the method eh, that we use. Okay, we have four phases. Okay, the first phase is the planning. Okay, so we trying to find the best uh, the pothole, eh, the, the area of the pothole, and then the equipment and the software solutions. So the equipment means uh, the drones and the sensors. And the software means uh, the software to process and the autonomous permissions. Okay, so the data collections is uh, involved the, the three parts. Okay, first is the camera calibration. So we perform the DJI Phantom 4 camera calibrations, okay, using the self calibrations. And then we use the grids eh, for, to perform the camera calibration. And then as a poor metric spectra, also we, uh, we perform the radiometric corrections. Eh, and then also we use the reflectance uh, calibration grids. Okay, and then the flat planning. 
okay, it's used to plan eh, that in uh, during the data capture. And so we uh, find the altitudes okay, and then the um, scale eh, during the data acquisition. And then the ground measurements, okay. So ground measurements means this is the 4D data validation. So after that, after we acquire the image, then we download the data and then we do we perform the photo processing. So the multispectral right, to uh, up, to develop the auto photo. Uh, to auto mosaic and then we have the uh, we have the four basic then okay we have green near infrared red and red edge and then we also combine okay, the bands okay this is the uh, main of in uh, the main finding in study we're trying to combine the single uh, uh, double layer and uh, double bands and the triple bands and eh, we try to combine eh, in order to determine which uh, combination band combination is best for the whole section and then we to the object based image segmentation. First, we classification, we perform the classification and then we classify and then we negotiate between port hole and the pavement and then we accept the port hole. So we, and then after that, we proceed with the case number four is data analysis. So the bank combinations, bands, okay, for the port hole exceptions. Okay, and this is the framework, eh, the general framework. So this is the matrix spectral, right? So we engage, we integrate the multiple sensor with the factor four. And then this is the interface of the participant sensor. We set uh, the time lapse and then the uh, GPS setting and everything here. And then we try and capture data. This is the example of the pothole. So this is the two pothole here. Eh? We have this image shows the two pothole here. And then uh, we try to differentiate between pavement and the pothole. Okay, this is the attribute. And then also we uh, can highlight eh, the pothole and eh, using the uh, algorithm. Eh, the segmentation algorithm and then we assert the pothole. Okay, so this is results analysis. So this is four bands. Okay, so the green, near infrared, red and red chest bands. Okay, the auto mosaics. So we can see the difference. Eh? Okay, so this is the list eh, of the combinations. Okay, as mentioned before, we have the single bands. We have the double as uh, two layer layer bands and then we have three layer bands. Okay, the pothole dimensions. Okay, this is the um, uh, data that we extract eh, after the pothole extractions. Okay, so we have the area measured. Okay, for the green eh, and, and until the three layers. Eh. So this is the actual. Okay, so the, eh, as you can see here, the errors. Okay, eh, for the pothole here, okay, the best combination is green, red, red edge. Okay, so you see, and then the, for the uh, pothole B is the, you see here, this is near infrared, red, red edge. Okay, the same band is the red edge and the red edge and Red edge here, you see the red edge hit in red edge uh, play in pothole in the pothole sections. So the best combination for the uh, pothole A is one is green, 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 and red edge, and then pothole B is near infrared, red, in red edge. Okay? So the A have no difference, and then the B is seven point five centimeter difference. So the conclusions, okay, the objective, okay, the objective of this study is to identify the pothole section. So so we use the thirteen uh, band combinations. Okay, uh, from the single band, double as uh, um, two layer band, and then the three layer bands. Okay, so the single band was also tested eh, to determine uh, the best representation. Okay, so the pothole A combination of the uh, green, red, red edge, okay, was the best combinations to extract the pothole, while the near, in the infrared, red, red edge was the best for the B. The second objective eh, to identify the 2D model eh, with the actual measurements. So the pothole A, Okay, the measured was uh, 1.2, uh, we used the actual data. Okay, so the bank recognition was the best. Right? For hole A is no difference. And then while the for hole B and infrared rate edge have the 7.5 uh, centimeter eh, difference. Okay, so we are really like to analyze eh, the fac uh, Faculty of Architecture, Planning and Spain, UITM, Research Management Institute and Ministry of Education eh, providing the grants eh, and also the uh, people who directly and indirectly in this research. So this is the difference of the research. Okay, so thank you very much. Okay, thanks to Mr. Tahar. Uh, as he has given the presentation online in a recorded mode. Uh, however, I think his study must be helpful for the public works department. So, We'll move to the next presentation uh, since it has been a recorded presentation. Uh, Pratipa, uh, is he online for any uh, session? Uh, no, sir. He joined, uh, but I think he's able to continue. Like uh, okay. his profile is in the dashboard. So anyone, if they have a doubt, they can uh, personally contact him. So uh, they can message. Okay. 
Okay, so we'll move to the next presentation. So this is by uh, Mr. Amit Kumar Jaina on disaster risk mapping from aerial imagery using deep learning techniques. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, can I request you to play the video actually because my internet connection is not that stable right now and there is some recurring noise near my home. Is it possible or should I uh, continue? Like you want us to play your video, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, just hold for a minute. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, we can play the, your video. There for the Q &A. Thank you. Okay, I mean, so we'll play the video and then maybe for query session we'll join live. Sure. Yeah. sure. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Mapping from aerial imagery using deep connection. Hello everyone. This is Amit Kumar Jena and I'm here to speak about our research titled as Disaster Risk Mapping from Aerial Imagery Using Deep Learning Techniques. So let's get started. In areas like the Caribbean, face natural disasters like earthquakes, floods, and hurricanes very frequently. And there is a risk of immense damage to life and property if the buildings do not follow certain modern construction standards. Manual inspection of buildings is a time consuming process and labor intensive as well as very expensive process, which is actually needed to make these buildings follow these construction standards strictly. So the main goal of our project is to build models using computer vision and deep learning techniques to quickly and accurately classify buildings according to the root material. To get more clarity about our research, basically there are two steps to perform disaster mapping using deep learning techniques. The first step is actually locating building rooftop images in, in very high resolution aerial images of the complete region. And this is actually a segmentation task. The second step is actually using these extracted rooftop images to find out about its construction material. And this thing is actually a classification task. So our research focuses basically on the second step. The data set which we use for our research consisted of very high resolution aerial drone images of seven different regions across three different Caribbean countries. In addition to the images, we also have information for, for the images like the geospatial coordinates of each building in the image, as well as the roof material information. In the roof material column, we have five different categories, namely as the concrete cement, healthy metal, incomplete, irregular metal and other. So if we can basically see here examples from all these classes, the concrete cement, healthy metal, incomplete and so on. Now let's see what kind of challenges we actually face while working on this research. The first and the most obvious challenge which we faced was the very high size of the TIFF images. Like we can see here the images, image size were in gigabytes. And so the Visualizing the building rooftop images from the complete TIFF image of the region was actually a very difficult task for us initially. The second big challenge was the unbalanced data set. We can see here in this table that for some classes like healthy metal, we have training samples more than 14,000. But for some classes that are incomplete, we don't even have 1,000 samples. So this created some problem. We will see how we resolve these challenges in the later part of this presentation. Now comes the methodology. We try to summarize our complete methodology in this figure. We acquire the data set, we analyze it, we extract the rooftop images, make the cross validation set, perform data augmentation, train the models like efficient and present next on these data, tune the hyperparameters, make them ensemble, and finally predict on the test data. Now comes the data pre processing part. The first step was obviously to extract the rooftop images from the complete image of the region. And this was done efficiently by the Restigio Python package. The second step was making, call, making a cross validation set. As we saw in the previous slides that uh, the data set was not balanced. So we made a stratified cross validation set of the data set, which had the same proportion of class labels as the input data set. The third step was the data augmentation. We perform transformations like flipping, zooming, cropping, and increasing the brightness of the rooftop images. And this was done to improve the trading data diversity. 
We also use another data augmentation technique called Mixer, which actually uses a linear combination of two images as an input to the input to the deep learning models. And this actually created a regularizing effect while training them. Now comes the deep learning methodology. The first step was the progressive resizing part. And this uh, technique actually helped us a lot in increasing the accuracy of our models. In this technique, the models are initially trained using smaller images and later trained on larger images. Training the models on smaller images first make the training process faster. And then later training on larger images improve the uh, accuracy gradually. Now we can see here, the, like we used the ResNex, ResNex and efficient net variance of the uh, scene and architectures, we actually performed quite well on the ImageNet data sets. We also use another technique called as a test time augmentation. And in this technique, we actually create five augmented copies of each image in the test data set, make prediction on each of them, and then we return the average of those predictions. Then finally, we, comes to, we come to the ensembling part, where we combine the results of the four best performing models on each image of the test data set. And this was the final prediction for each image. We actually use the log loss function as our performance metric. And in this table, we can actually see the performance of various models, which we experimented on. You can see here the testing loss, the training loss, and so on. And the least log loss score of 0.4373, which is actually less than all of these training testing losses, was obtained from the ensemble of these four models. So as a future work, we would like to experiment with uh, some various type of losses like label smoothing loss. And we'll also try to experiment with temperature scaling to get more accurate probability values. Also, we would like to use the metadata associated with the image, like its location, the polygon cat, you know, characteristics of the rooftops and the, the, the images of the neighboring buildings. And we hypothesize that information like these can be combined with the features extracted from the CNNs to make a better prediction of the uh, construction material of the rooftop images. We can see here uh, the complete course source code which was used for this research and this GitHub repository. And please feel free to contact me on this uh, email ID for any queries regarding this research. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jenna. Thank you. So you are from IIT Dhanbad. Yes, sir. Doing which course there? Uh, so I'm pursuing mathematics and computing. Uh, it's a five-year integrated uh, MTech course, actually. Okay, so you have prepared the source code yourself for this application? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, for sir. Ro rooftop uh, material identification? Exactly, sir, yeah. Okay, okay good. So any questions are there? Uh, sir, no questions from audience side. Surinja, sir. One question from my side. Uh, actually, few questions. So, you, in training data set, uh, you you have used some images. So, what was the size of the image for the training uh, during training? Size uh, okay, sir. Image? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, initially, it was actually a big diff images, but after, after we extract the rooftop images, we resized it to around two fifty six to two fifty six. Like that. It, it was the size of that. Okay. Second thing, when you are using data augmentation technique, you are using cropping, image cropping. So yes, sir, image yes, cropping, if you like 256, 256 images there, and if you will crop that, that thing, so in that case, like you will get only some part of the rooftop. So to, in that case, what you, how you are handling that situation? Uh, we are actually uh, made the center cropping actually. So like we you use different kinds of transformation, but for cropping exactly, we use the, the center cropping. So it actually, when we use center cropping, it actually focus on the uh, the rooftop exactly, not some surrounding materials. Like we also saw that the images, the shapes of the buildings can be actually quite different. So we actually focus on only the center cropping technique. Okay, so in, when when you will crop that thing, that uh, the center thing, so two fifty six by two fifty six image will be reduced by some size. So then you will uh, again decide to to that two fifty six. What you are doing? In that case. Uh, okay, so uh, in actually we use a technique called progressive resizing, where we actually uh, the initial size were 256 or 256. We first of all, when we uh, initially trained the models first, we downsized it to 128 plus 128. So how this helped actually was that uh, the models are actually trained on smaller images first. And so what ha exactly happened here is that the models were actually 
uh, got some idea about the images in the data set as well as the training process was, was faster. And then we again trained the model if, if with the actual image size, which, which was the 256 plus 256. And in actually this case, what actually happened was initially the training was faster and uh, it actually got some idea about the images. But when we uh, saw uh, like, like the model C, the largest images, the accuracy was actually improved because like uh, after we make them see the some basic features, and then again, we let them see the uh, larger image. The, the features which actually uh, were extracted from the CNNs, it was uh, it became more fine tuned. And so I think in that case, it actually helped us out, and it actually gave us a more regularizing effect while training the models. And that's why the accuracy was improved there. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Ask question. Ask question, sir. Uh, can I ask you? One question. Yeah, Mr. Volkan, you can go ahead. Uh, I would like to know if you made any rearrangements on the model you used. I mean, all the model you used in the study. Uh, can you just be like, what kind of rearrangements uh, like we have like to inquire? Right? Uh, did, 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 you, did you use the standard models? Exactly, yeah. Only the standard models which we like downloaded oh, the pre-trained weights from which are trained on the image data sets. Yeah. Okay, you didn't make any revisions on the model. No, no. We just directly use those models. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, so we'll move ahead to uh, the next session, uh, next uh, presentation by uh, Katur Ariz Rukmana uh, from uh, Indonesia. On the topic, some announcements of the aerial and uh, terrestrial photo for 3D modeling of textureless object surface. Yeah. Over to you. Check, check. Can you hear me? Well? Yes, you are check, audible. Check. Wait, wait, wait. Can I start? Uh, your screen is not visible completely. Double click to enter full screen mode. Showing. So double click on the screen. Sorry? Share uh, your presentation. Your presentation is not visible to us. Uh, can you stop wait, sharing wait, wait. and uh, give share again? Wait, wait, wait. Maybe you can skip, skip if I have a technical problem and you go back with me later on. Wait, wait. Okay, I stop selling first. Okay. Hey, sorry. Okay, how about this? Check, check. Your screen is shared now, but it is too blurred. We are unable to read the text clearly. How about now? Uh, the same issue resist. Yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry. Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I play your uh, video else? Now it is okay. Now it yeah, is okay. now it is fine. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ushi and. Uh, Good, good afternoon, I think, everyone. And I wish you keep healthy in there and forget the COVID-19 for a while, yeah? So my focus is on uh, actually uh, uh, many questions about how should we use uh, optical or laser, something like that, uh, something like that, this one. This is the most frequently asked question. 
uh, use using uh, camera or using lidar. One of the lack of the optical, I think, yeah, this because the textureless object problem. Yeah, this is the situation when we working with the uh, optical. We always we always have problem in a in a some kind object like this. This is uh, very homogeneous, so it's difficult to uh, uh, to uh, to beat the laser. I think yeah, laser is okay for this, but because uh, we need to keep low cost, we need to keep uh, the cost is cost effective. So I try to keep as a camera guys, yeah, not late lidar guys. The most important thing is we, for for uh, working with the camera is lighting. Lighting is everything. If we can uh, uh, make a homogeneous lighting, it's okay. But actually, it's not because uh, many uh, variable. This is sample of uh, uh, water. This is water problem. This is a uh, building of of course and and maybe so on. There are many homogeneous texture. So this is the problem working with optical. That's why we don't come here. Yeah. This uh, my sample uh, case taken my, by my student. Uh, I think it's the a good sample for homogene object yeah, because its surrounding is uh, homogene and uh, also it's difficult because it's crowded area in here. So the challenge is uh, to combine area terrestrial and also uh, how to uh, solve this uh, this homogeneous area in centimeter accuracy this is the location uh, you can found in the google uh, it's called more krapia and yeah. krapia okay as a standard procedure we use a control point um, checkpoint and also on some uh, image processing software as well. We use uh, this is open source. This is a uh, uh, Topaz. Topaz, I think uh, this also uh, open source, but not in but not in Topaz. And this is capture in reality. And uh, for for uh, uh, I mean, I cannot make uh, one parameter that can determine for all object. So I take one example. This this is specially for the building. Maybe not working in other others uh, object. So we should try an error. This is also for spec and row. This is the example of the of the uh, of the picture. Yeah. This is the row <coughs> row picture. You can see uh, this is minimum minimum texture. This is after we improve their texture. This is after we uh, plus uh, filtering this uh, texture. So it's rather homogeneous than this. And we compare this uh, three type of uh, enhancement and uh, combine with the original one. This is the original one. This is the class of population. This is the Spectral. It's similar. Yeah. It's no 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 problem with this. Uh, but if we look at the, the detail, we can found that um, working with enhancement is significant faster than the original, and also significant reduce the error than the original. Why? Because we 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 have a texture here that uh, make this point point more accurate than this one and uh, this is a uh, for the whole uh, mode object we can check by the vertex number or mesh or by uh, overall process we can see that it's similar it's similar in uh, in number of vertex point or we call dense cloud in uh, some area or we call um, DTM or DSM, it is the same, it's the vertex point. And uh, it's the same, but uh, the quality is uh, 
very different. You can see here, we don't have any point in this area, but we can point this one. Another example, we can get a better result in here, depend on this polygonal. This is another example. We can uh, have a more more visible, yeah, more visible in uh, in the, this area after we enhance regarding to the its original. So as a conclusion, I can say that I cannot make a one one uh, parameter for all the object for this uh, enhancement. But we do we have improvement after we uh, enhance before we doing a structure for motion calculation but we don't have any uh, general parameter for to for all of the object because it's, it's very different different uh, character if you can see this one it's very different another object will imply different parameter i think uh, that's all my sharing uh, today and thank you for this uh, moment and wish you all healthy. Thank you. Okay, so overall, you your, good. so overall your objective was to uh, develop a 3D model uh, on a featureless surface using the structure from motion approach? Yeah, it's, it's, it, I think it's, it's standard. It's, stand, it's standard requirement for early construction, but I focus uh, how to uh, how to close to lidar, yeah, how to close to lidar because in a homogeneous area, it is difficult for for optical only yeah, to solve this. So the that's why we, we is have, difficult. Yeah, that's why we we have to improve before we doing a uh, structure from motion by uh, uh, something like this clay 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 and also okay. the vectoral. Okay, any queries are there? from the audience uh, no questions sir. We can... okay okay thank you mr katur thank you so mr. now uh, yeah. so we'll go to the next uh, presentation uh, by mr abhishek adhikari uh, on the topic and approach for uav based analysis for orchard geo management over to you abhishek yes sir Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank the judges and an organizing member to provide me an opportunity on a UV to present my views on the topic, a UV based approach for analysis of orchard geo management. So first of all, basically then orchard is a group of trees of similar species over a small region, mainly for harvesting fruits and nuts. Uh, when I talk about orchard management, so they are skilled workers, but they have limited because uh, being orchard are being managed throughout the air and being a vast area, the remote sensing surveys can assist these skilled workers in better orchard management and improve the productivity of the orchard. In the uh, remote sensing uh, surveys, the UAV remote sensing based uh, surveys for orchard management provide an advantage over the terrestrial uh, being uh, able to cover vast area and uh, satellite because of the customization factor of the uh, UAVs. Means we can uh, use UAV anytime uh, we want to collect the data. The remote sensing based uh, here is basically uh, wound around the idea of using the RGB image captured from the commercial of the self camera, uh, DSLR cameras uh, bound to a UAV platform to uh, conduct surveys of the orchards. So from the uh, high, ultra high resolution image, we can extract two uh, important phenomena. The, the, those are the spectral behavior in the red, green, red, green and blue band and the spatial features. In the previous one, I have uh, delineated uh, uh, the tree canopies uh, using object-based random forest method. And uh, using uh, those, using that technique, I have uh, further analyzed how it can be used in orchard management by extracting the various features. 
so these are the description of the pre current presentation so this is my study area it is located in a uh, koti nahar uh, village in dehradun district of uttarakhand these are the image metadata well this is the image of an orchard this is an a mango orchard and uh, the uh, picture taken was due in a month of march when the flower buds are booming and the fruit has not yet come uh, the following is the methodology followed but in this paper i will be focusing mainly on the remote sensing aspect of the uav that is focusing on the data analysis of its spatial features spectral feature and orchard as a whole so first of all beginning with the height estimation using shadows so using a simple uh, trigonometric e equation and uh, i have calculated the height from height of the tree canopies from the shadows uh, and uh, also from the field using distometer of the 10 and 10 random uh, samples trees in this uh, we can see that the similarity between the height estimated from the image and from the uh, field is quite similar and uh, hence uh, uh, Im image tree heights can be easily extracted from the ortho images in the next analysis is another special property in this i have used the classified or already classified image which has was able to classify the image uh, up to certain extent but it cannot delineate the images uh, which were overlapping so i have manually so it is a semi -automatic, automatic method in which uh, individual tree id uh, tree canopies have been given their unique id hence it is easier now to analyze and process each of the tree canopy properties individually and another special property i have added is uh, we have also delineated tree canopy manually and uh, using a object based uh, uh, delineation method and uh, we have compared few uh, trees and we observed that uh, from automated method and uh, field surveys and manual digitization, the area of the tree canopies appeared to be quite similar, whereas the parameter had a quite difference. This was due to the fact that the automated method had a very good boundary adherence, which could not be achieved by the manual method. Hence, the, the uh, larger difference in parameter was observed. Coming to the spectral properties, the following 11 properties were uh, tested uh, those are the original red green and blue band and then these are the glcm texture brands so basically to zoom it out and focus on few due to time limitation i have uh, test, i am showing only four parameters so in this uh, the basically uh, i have used uh, the canopy pixels and the ground pixels and compared them to show the behavior of the intensity in various bands also the since the it was an object so the shape index was also calculated and it is also displayed and this is the uh, of a single tree canopy was selected and uh, it's uh, different different bands are compared so we can see that uh, the values of the object based and the manual method have are quite similar but the difference is that uh, object uh, semi automatic method is quite faster than the manual delineation of the tree canopies in this this is uh, basically the histogram for different different uh, properties uh, for the the uh, for the orchard in this the we can see that the behavior is quite similar for the spectral uh, para properties but uh, the properties for a shape index and the parameter is quite different for manual method and uh, automated method. Also, it is uh, it is to be noted that in uh, band two, that is the green band, there is a bimodal histogram. This is due to the fact that the tree, uh, the mango trees, uh, but uh, simultaneously in one year they will bear more fruit than the previous year. So in this, few trees are bearing more fruit, and while other trees are bearing less fruits, hence. Uh, the bimodal histogram. Finally, the uh, orchard property as a whole, I have used uh, the uh, canopy centers as a prop, as a pro proper feature to derive new properties of the tree canopies. First of all is the proximity values, basically, and the orchard closeness values. And the figure above shows the one being the centermost canopy, while the 99 being the farthest canopy. And have arranged the label the number as such. So coming to the proximity values, proximity values nothing. When a tree canopy distance from all the trees in the orchard is calculated, it tells about uh, 
how much uh, value the uh, tree dist distance is averaged for all the other tree canopies. So when this proximity value is averaged for the whole orchard, so it can tell us about a depth uh, a, a similar to the density of the orchard, but with more depth, since uh, as we shown in the figure, where orchard uh, B will have a larger orchard closer sector than the orchard A. So that was all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Abhishek. Uh, it's a very good application study. Uh, so any queries from the audience? Yeah, no, Dr. Ravi. Yeah. Uh, Abhishek, uh, do you see other any other species is having the same issue? Do you know that? Uh, no, sir. The current study was fully focused on an orchard or mango orchard. Okay. So can you see the same problem is there? In, in fact, it is a difficult uh, coconut tree and palm tree. Yes, sir. it is also using this method. It can be studied and uh, tested for the coconut and palm trees too. Yeah, because through satellite data is very difficult to identify True, until, unless if you have a spectral signature things. Otherwise, it's very, very difficult. Uh, you please attempt uh, if you get time to in that way because we have a collaboration with the Indian Institute of Isle Palm Research. So they are very keenly interested in this concern. So if you find anything else, kindly let us know. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Ashwini. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Uh, or no? no, sir. From audience, there is no any questions. One question sir, from my side. Okay. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Abhishek, your name is Abhishek. Man. Yes, so sir. One, one slide you used the, the uh, height estimation from shadow. Yes, sir. There, use some parameter of 10 alpha in uh, the shadow. Yes, sir. There are two parameters for unknown, like uh, height and 10, 10 alpha and shadow. Uh, so, yes, sir. So the, for the, as we know that this is an ortho image, georectified ortho image. So we know the latin, latitude and longitude of the each three canopies. Okay. Okay. And we also know the time when the photos was captured. Okay. So there is a model known as VSOP87, which can uh, be used for any ellipsoid in the solar system, which can be used to know, uh, knowing the latitude, longitude, and time, and the solar elevation angle and the solar azimuth angle can be calculated. And knowing the shadow length and uh, the solar elevation angle, the, we can esti roughly estimate uh, the uh, 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 height of the tree canopy. So this uh, this height was estimated from a satellite image. No, sir. The ortho the uh, it was estimated using this uh, this okay. image only the UAV image. UAV image. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank thank you, Abhishek. Uh, due to constant of time, uh, we would like to move uh, with the next presentation. And uh, Mr. Mr. Abhishek and uh, Mr. Swed, as we have our email IDs with each other. Uh, maybe we can interact again uh, when required. Okay, thank you. So we'll move to the next presentation uh, by Mr. Ziao Zuan on application of UAV data in corn field monitoring and management. Yeah, over to you. Yeah. Oh, okay, I will show my PowerPoint. So, okay. Uh, good day to all. I'm Xiao Juan from Hokkaido University. Today, I will present uh, the research entitled Application of UAV Data in Corn Field Monitoring and Management. So, introduction. It was projected by 2015. The world's population will reach 9.1 billion, uh, which, which is 34% healthier in year 2009. As a result, will uh, decrease will be increased over 70% in, in food demand, according to FAO 2009. Uh, remote sensing is a reliable source, source of data for uh, monitoring, assessing, and uh, managing the crop for processing agriculture. And uh, this, this study uh, demonstrated the use of UAV structure for motion, which, motion, which is an effective way for crop monitoring and to optimize the crop yield. So in this, in this study, the objective, uh, 
to uh, to map and monitor the cone field using UAV stru structure for motion technique using RGB and the multispectral sensor, and to investigate the performance of different experimental cone field management practices, and the, to suggest the best management practice to optimize the yield. So this map shows the location of experiment sites, which located in Iwamizawa Prefecture in Hokkaido, Uni uh, Hokkaido Japan. The experimental sites are field one and, uh, and the field two, and uh, with each divided into two sections. Uh, this diagram summarizes the workflow of, the, of this study. We collected uh, three types of field data, namely grand control points, UAV error photos, and the cone height measurement uh, sample. Another data used uh, is planting and the manager management record. The error uh, photo was processing processed uh, using structure for motion software to produce uh, automatic automatic image. And the automatic the user to to generate the vegetation index indexes and uh, also the um, point cloud of DSM and the generated DTM used to uh, produce the canopy height model. The automatic also uh, digitized manually and for counting the plant plant rule and also to uh, estimate the plant count. The crop projection error over overestimate complaint was generated with 16 centimeter diameter and used to extract the value of each estimated vegetation in indices. So this table summarizes the four section comb field information and the which each section was pl planted in different uh, dates and the different plant planting depths and the uh, uh, fertilization methods. So uh, this table summarizes the, the data collected uh, information over the experiment site using RGB and the uh, multispectral sensors mounted on the UAV and also field measurements of uh, cone height and the GCP using PPKG NSS were performed. So, here are the results of field measured height compared to the extract, extracted CHM height, uh, which shows a good uh, corre corre correlation. So this map shows the ex estimated plant, plant count in both uh, field, field one and field two. And uh, the set germinate germination rate for field one is uh, 30% and uh, for field two at 41% uh, of the original plant uh, seed. So figure five shows the result summary, summary of the CHM, NDVI, NDI, and the estimated uh, cone plant count for the four sections. Here we, we can see the, oh, sorry. Here we can see the overall section, section three and the four of the experiment sites are well performed in terms of CHM, NDVI, NDIE, plant count estimation, and also the germination rate. So for discussion, the plant number ref reflects not only the field emergency, but also is one of the crucial parameters for process assessment cone field uh, cone yield. In this study, field two ha have been greater estimated uh, plant count, which indicates a uh, high cone field, cone cone field yield. And the uh, section three and the uh, four with the same planted depths, but fertilization method is different. And uh, the fertilization method uh, above plant for section three and the uh, three centimeter proximeter for section four. The results in figure five also shows that section four are better uh, performed than section three, indicating the fertilization method making an impact on the uh, vegetation indices, especially on the NDIE. 
which is a useful indicator for plant vigor. So for conclusion, this study uh, based on the UAV RGB images estimated uh, the corn plant count and the germination rate was approximately 30% in field one and 41% uh, in field two. And the plant depths affect the germination, germination rate and NDVI, while the fer fer fertilization method makes impact on vegetation indices, uh, especially on NDIE. So the, the analysis of the corn field management practice and the performance can serve as a voice for smallholders, farmer and uh, uh, researchers to draw much broader uh, application in efficiency agriculture management with the help of UAV remote sensing and the GIS. That's all for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chuan. So it is again a field-based study and uh, can help the uh, agriculture management people uh, for proper yield from the crops. So now any uh, queries are there? Floor is uh, open. For the no, sir. Queries. No, there is no question. Okay. So, okay. Ankush. Yeah. Okay. So we'll move. Uh, thank you, Ms. Wen. So we'll move to thank the next presentation. So Mr. Uh, Ankush Agarwal, uh, now he's having the final presentation on an efficient application of machine learning for assessment of terrain 3D information using drone data. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, yeah you are audible. Yeah. You can share the slides. Yes. Is this slide visible? Yes, yes, yes. You can begin. Slide mode, you can go. Yeah, in the slide mode. I'm... Okay, fine. So you can begin, no problem, no issue. Is there an issue? Um, no issue, sir. You can start your uh, presentation. Slide mode. Like we are, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Now is it okay? Yes, sir, you can start your presentation. Okay. It's clear. So good afternoon, everyone. I am Ankush Agarwal. I am going to present my paper, uh, an efficient application of machine learning uh, for assessment of uh, terrain 3D information by using the drone data. So these are the contents which I am going to cover during my presentation. So let's start with the introduction. So terrain information is of utmost importance. Uh, to obtain the knowledge about the possible path, especially in the unexplored area. So during vegetation monitoring, as we know that various parameters like the plant growth, soil moisture and others are uh, observed uh, time by time. And in the smart agriculture, the necessity of any parameter is fulfilled as per the demand and position in the field. So what the challenge? The challenge is the need of a drone imagery that provides us the precise level of the terrain information by which we can train our network so that it will give us the efficient results. And uh, the correct recording of the plant height of the GCP, as we know that the few crops are too high to measure, for example, the sugar cane, that is ranges from three, uh, 380 centimeters to the 420, 430 centimeters. So the objective is to estimate the terrain information in terms of the plant height by using the drone data uh, and to monitor the healthy growth of the plant. As we know that uh, if we can measure the height, then uh, we can also tell us tells the growth of the plant or any crop. So in the study area, as we can see the directive of the study area. So this is our study area. And uh, under the study area, we have three types, uh, two vegetation like uh, wheat and uh, sugarcane as uh, shown in the zoomed in segment one and two, and third part is the fallow line. So data for the four dates has been collected uh, as mentioned in the table. Uh, 
and uh, the DID is used to, as a nomenclature in the further searches, as mentioned by D1, D2, D3, and D4. The data is captured in two modes. First one by using the drone image, and second one is the in situ data collection. So by using the drone, uh, uh, as uh, many of the things about the pre-processing of the drone has been discussed by various presenters, presenters so I will not take much of the time. Uh, simply by using the drone, there are two modes. Either we can manually fly the drone and do the random clicks. Or second is uh, we'll set a plan. So for example, this is a field uh, studying area and we'll set a plan. That plan will be deployed in a drone and the drone will follow that path to click the images of the desired path and uh, after getting the images, we will stitch them to make a single mosaic image. In terms of the institute data collection, these are the various uh, images uh, of the institute data collection of the height of the various crops, uh, which are on the different stages. And uh, this is a uh, height measurement of the different GCPs, and, uh, which is overlaid on the Google Earth imagery for the DID D1, data ID D1. In this slide, we will show the uh, temporal variation in the crop site, as we can see in the A, B, C, and D for the DIT, D1, D2, D3, and D4 respectively. This is for the wheat crop. The same has been plotted in the graphical representation. Uh, so for the uh, D1, D2, D3, and D4, these are the various sites uh, measured during the institute data collection. And the 29th, 11th, 2018, it's a uh, swing date of the wheat crop. So that's why it is zero. So in the methodology part, uh, we started with the data acquisition by the drone. Next, uh, in the pre-processing part, uh, we import the data uh, in our PIX40 software. Uh, next, we align the image. Uh, this is an important image. As we can see in this image, that these are the surface. And in the other image, uh, as these are the aligning of the all the images, but these are the other images. Why it is so? Because during the takeoff and landing, uh, drone starts capturing the images in the autopilot mode. So we need to remove those images uh, so that all the images will give us the uh, good result. Uh, so this is the mosaic image of the study area and the uh, generated DSM. After generating the DSM, we extracted uh, uh, in the feature extraction part, we took the subset of the chosen study area and uh, we extract the topographic parameters uh, from the DSM, like uh, aspect, slope, shape, relief, etc. So these are the four topographic parameters that will be used to do the network to estimate the height of the crop. So after that, uh, we'll extract the pixel value from the ground truth information. This is a GPI file, ground truth information file, uh, which we have created during the SQL data collection, which consists of the latitude, longitude, and the uh, measured height of the various crops. After this, uh, uh, network is designed in which uh, the four topographic parameters are given at the input node, which results in a relation with the measured height. And after that, we have validated our uh, generated relation on the other days. So in the result and discussion part, this is a generated result. So as you can see that the green bars are the ground truth measured height, but and the red line is the estimated height from the network. So as we can see that it is a, it gives us a good result in terms of uh, the height, but uh, at few places, like uh, if we can see this part, so it is not giving uh, a satisfactory result. The reason is because of uh, uh, boundary pixel or the mixed pixel, like uh, we reported the pixel and the GC lat long, but uh, that lat long accuracy might not be good at that time. And it is shifted to the nearby crop, like uh, a wheat crop and the sugarcane crop or some other crop. So that's why there is a reason of an outlier under this general image. And this is a scatter plot that is uh, plotted in between the ground truth measured height and the estimated height. A red line is one is to one slope line, whereas a blue dotted line uh, is uh, a trend line. Uh, so with the closeness, uh, it uh, shows that how uh, good the relation, generated relation is in terms of measuring the height. As we can see in the scatter plot that there are the two clusters, uh, one in the lower side. Uh, this is a wheat cluster. And the wheat crop is a uh, maximum of the 90, 95 centimeters. And uh, another cluster is of a sugarcane that is ranges from 380 to 420, 420 centimeters. So there are two clusters of the wheat and sugarcane crop. crop. Uh, this is a temporal uh, variation shows for the wheat crop for the various dates like up to 30th January, 8 March, and the 27th March. 
so this is uh, ground truth again a ground truth delta estimated for the wheat so we can see the similarity uh, and of course there is a plus minus 5% error so uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of the whole study area we have uh, applied the same relation to the four whole drone imagery of the uh, study area so this is the uh, height measured in the whole study area but if you want to realize the uh, field in a 3d then uh, we can't uh, plot it in a 3d like we can do it but uh, it takes a lot of processing time uh, to plot it in a 3d so what i do is upscale that in a spatial of 10 meter by 10 meter so that uh, the number of samples can be reduced in this image uh, in the b image and the same is plotted in a 3d to realize the effect of the 3d in terms of the uh, major height so as we can see uh, uh, height is calculated uh, for the DID D1 in the image uh, C. The same has been calculated for the D2, D3 and D4 depths of the respective heights. So as we can see that uh, how good it gives the result at uh, there is no supercane over here because uh, the supercane is harvested at that time. So for validating, uh, we, we are taking a ROI as shown in the yellow rectangle. Uh, and uh, the respective image of that subset for the DID D1 is shown in the column number 1, 2, and 3. In column 1, it is a 2D, 2D height estimation. In column 2, it is a 3D height estimation. And the sample reference imagery of the uh, drone is shown in the column 3. The Can you conclude, Mr. Yeah. Yes, sure, sir. Last slide. There is a last slide. Uh, the same has been plotted for the D2, D3, and D4 dates also. So as we can see how good it is in terms of estimating the height with the reference images. So this is a scatter plot. Uh, after that, we have minimized the error. So this is a plot of before and after calibration means and uh, mean error has been minimized. And in the conclusion part, a machine learning based mobile approach has been explored in which a feed forward neural network is used to estimate the plant height. The advantage of this method is that it, it used to generate a relation between the major height and the extracted topographic parameters and the relation is then optimized to minimize the error. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Ankush. It is a very useful presentation uh, related to agriculture again. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. So any queries are there? Pratibha, any uh, more presentations are no there? Queries, uh, no queries. No queries. The presentations are complete. Uh, I thank uh, chair and co-chair for sparing the valuable time and uh, giving the good reviews. I thank all the participants uh, for sharing their uh, research work with us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I thank everybody. Uh, it has been a good session with the six uh, uh, presentations from other countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, Japan, and other countries. So it shows the interest uh, of various researchers uh, across the globe. And uh, you have shown very good practical uh, applications uh, from the agriculture field uh, to the technology side, such as the structures from motion and the utilization of the uh, GNSS and the PPK techniques. So I wish all the best to all the participants and hope to meet you again sometime. So over Thank to you, you, Pratibha. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I thank you all for uh, all presenters for presenting this session. So it was a very good uh, session covering different uh, fields, the agriculture and structure for motion. And I would also like to thank uh, Team USG for giving me this opportunity to uh, co-chair this session. And thank you, Astor, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.